first award is the David Halliday and, and Robert Resnick Award for Excellence in Undergraduate Physics Teaching. This year, the award is presented to Michael Jackson. I'll ask him to come up. In recognition of his contribution to undergraduate physics teaching and his extraordinary accomplishments in communicating the excitement of physics to students, John Wiley and Sons is the principal source of funding for this award. Jack Jackson earned his BS in physics and mathematics at the State University of New York, Oswego, and his PhD in physics at New Mexico State University. He taught at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse and State University of West Georgia Carrollton before going to Central Washington University, where he is currently professor and chair of the Department of Physics. During his career, Jackson has established an exceptional record of accomplishments in all three key aspects of a faculty member's responsibilities, instruction, scholarship, and service. He is an excellent and popular teacher who has accumulated a superior record of peer-reviewed scholarship while carrying out sustained contributions to the university, profession, and to the community, all while serving as a transformative chair for CWU's physics department during a particularly challenging and demanding period for the department and the university. I'm not sure departments have unchallenging periods, but... <laughs> while serving as the chair of his department, Jackson typically teaches a full load of undergraduate courses at both the introductory and the upper division levels, as well as teaching in and contributing to CWU's NSF-funded Science Talented Expansion Program and teaching a range of other credit-bearing courses. He is highly regarded by the faculty and staff in the department and the college for his commitment to, success in, and champion, championing of highly effective teaching. Qualitative and quantitative student evaluation, instruction survey results, and other assessments of his teaching have consistently portrayed Jackson as an exceptional and dynamic instructor who is deeply interested in student learning and is constantly seeking out and applying best practices and techniques. In addition to classroom instruction, Jackson has maintained an outstanding record of mentoring undergraduate student projects, including mentoring students in CWU's competitive and demanding science honors research program. Beyond the classroom, Jackson has engaged in the general public and K-12, has engaged general public and K-12 students through a variety of outreach programs. From rockets and solar observing to the construction of kaleidoscopes, these programs were designed to spark an interest in physics and science. I'd like you all to join me in welcoming this year's Halliday and Resnick Award for Excellence in Undergraduate Physics Teaching. So I'd like to start off with a disclaimer. One, I'm not used to standing behind a podium and being tethered to it. Two, I'm not used to using a microphone. And three, for those people who know me, know that I'm not used to wearing pants. And so with that, I'd like to go ahead and get started on this presentation. And so there's the title that's in the abstract book. I think uh, in reality, probably another way to talk about this type of presentation whoops, is a case study on implementing the spin-up program. For those people who have not heard about this, the spin-up report is something that I really strongly urge you to go ahead and look at. It was developed by the National Task Force on Undergraduate Physics back in the early 2000s, and it's applicable to large universities, it's applicable to, to small regional universities. There's a spin-up report on community colleges, high school teachers encourage your students to look at because these are key things that, that they should be looking for in a, in a program as they go ahead and move forward in, in selecting a, a physics program. And so now, you know, there are some things, you know, in, 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 that in putting together this talk, there are some things that, you know, I reflected on uh, about this and, and things that I, I seem to remember. There are certain things in life that get ingrained in our memory. And some people may say, well, that, maybe that's graduation. Well, maybe that's uh, a marriage. Well, maybe that's, you know, the birth of a child. Okay, but for me, for me, it was a presentation by Ruth Howes at a Wisconsin AAPT meeting that was held at UW Lacrosse. And so I remember the presentation well. She was the invited plenary speaker. We had uh, an evening kind of dinner and then, and then a presentation. And the next two slides are kind of uh, give you an idea of what was ingrained in my memory, okay? And so she kind of started off by saying, you know, how do physicists view themselves in academia? You know, what, what is the traditional view of physicists? And of course, what comes up was this. Physics, of course, is where? At the center, right? So here it is, there we are. 
and everyone revolves around us, right? Mercury hot, there's nobody equivalent to Mercury because they're too close to us. Okay, but maybe we'll go ahead and let the mathematicians be Venus. We'll let the chemists be Earth, and maybe the geologists go ahead and be Mars. We'll, because there's so many different engineering disciplines, well, maybe we'll let them be the asteroid belt. The biologists, oh, they're just a bunch of gas giants, right? Ha! Ah, okay? And what? Anyone who has science in their name clearly is not a science, so we, we relegate them to the go-ahead and to be the, the giant, the, 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 the dwarf planets all the way out there, right? So, so that was what the traditional view of a physicist that she was presenting. And so I was looking at that, and I was laughing, and I said, all right, all right. So, and then, of course, what is the next slide? The next slide is what everyone else thinks of us. Okay, and so in particular, how does the administration think of a physicist? <laughs> and so I saw that slide. I looked down at my plate. I looked back at the slide, I looked down at my plate, and what did I see? The only thing I had eaten that night was the steak. I left all the vegetables there. And so I said to myself, my goodness, I'm gonna go ahead and go extinct. Okay, so I had a panic attack, and then I made a vow at that point. The vow was to one, eat my vegetables, and two, to find a way to evolve. To find a way to evolve as a physicist. And that includes evolving in my teaching, evolving in the way that I communicate science to the public, and communicate science to the legislature, uh, to the administration, uh, to go ahead and, and, and how do I go ahead and how is my research informed by my position, which is how am I incorporating those undergraduates into my research. So all of those things, that, that, that was the thing that always now is, is driving me, is how I can go ahead and evolve. And of course, why is our evolution important? Our, I believe our evolution is important for some of the reasons why you'll just see these quotes here. So during our program review a couple of years ago, one of the quotes was, given that physics is such a small department, would there be a gain in efficiency in consolidation with another department? Well, that's really nice and supportive for a new department chair to hear, okay? And then, of course, the next year, well, let's go ahead and uh, suggest eliminating the Bachelor of Arts degree in physics. And that was suggested by the Academic Planning Task Force. And of course, what's very encouraging about that is when you have your own dean be the one to leading that task force. And of course, what's the role of that task force? To go ahead and what? Optimize programs, streamline time to degree, and focus resources. Well, that degree does nothing to change the resource allocation because it doesn't cost anything. It increases time to degree, and it actually limits opportunities for students. So yeah, clearly that, 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 that meets the criteria. And then of course now, the same person who, who, the same genius here who went ahead and talked to our program review, I guess now gets promoted to associate provost, and of course concurs with this because of the no low number of graduates. And so why is our evolution important? Because A, not all administrators will evolve, and B, they will certainly not go extinct. So we have to find a way to go ahead and evolve ourselves. Because in the end, in the end, they are the ones who control the resources. So I have to find a way to go ahead and engage them and get them convinced to go ahead and make physics the priority to invest in. If, if we don't do it, who will? Okay? And so that's why our evolution is very important. And so before I, I, I talk a little bit about uh, Central Washington University, I need to give you at least a little bit of background of, of where I am, or at least what I've done. So, of course, uh, I, I work now at two universities, the State University of West Georgia, now the University of West Georgia, where I worked with another award winner, Dr. Bob Powell, there. Um, so we had the pleasure of working together. And then I also worked at the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse, and that's where I spent most of my time, and so maybe that's where I'd like to focus some of that. For those people who have heard about the spin-up report, um, Lacrosse was one of the ones selected as a thriving uh, program by that, by that group, and they're in that report as a case study. They were selected in 2004 for a Teaching Excellence Award, and they're repeatedly you know, producing. They're producing a large number of majors. They're mostly collaborative department with good administrative support. They have a dual degree physics engineering program, strong support for undergraduate research, a strong SPS presence. This last year, they were one of the, one of the departments selected by APS for improving under, undergraduate education. And what I like most about the lacrosse story was this. Back in 1988, the UW system questioned whether physics was a viable major. And what did they recommend? That you consider drop, uh, dropping that undergraduate major in physics. That, to me, is what, what's most, that, that's the best part of the lacrosse story. And, and what did, what, how did they survive? It took an administrator who did evolve. Charles Chalene was a, was a mathematician there. 
Um, and he said, there's no way we're going to have a college of the sciences without mathematics, uh, without physics. And so he made a strategic investment. He, he hired John Norbury as the external chair. He hired Suda, um, who some of you may know, um, as, as, as a new faculty member. Suda then took over the role of the department chair in 1996, and he's been chair ever since. And you know, they've been able to sustain this type of program. Now, I think this is a great, great example of, of the spin-up and, and how these things are, are implemented. My, my role in all of this is, is I've known Suda back even before he started at lacrosse. He was my undergraduate research advisor. Uh, we then went to different schools, and then but we came around again. He was my PhD advisor. Um, I started teaching at lacrosse, and so he was my department chair. Uh, the last year I was there, I became department chair because he went to become associate dean. And then, uh, you know, he was going to come back to the faculty, and all the faculty were joking, well, we're going to have to have an election to see who is going to be our department chair? You was Suda. And I said, well, this is just too bizarre. I need to leave. Okay, there's no way that I can be chair over Suda, my, 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 my own you know, undergraduate research advisor and PhD advisor. So, you know, there had to be something else to look for. And so, Central Washington University was the one. And so, you can see the picturesque view of Central Washington University. There's our physics department right there uh, in the 60 plus year old building uh, with the observatory there on top. I'm, I'm happy to let you know that the legislature funded a 61 plus million dollar facility that we just heard about, and so physics and geology will be moving into this new facility that's designed with scale-up kind of programs, undergraduate research in mind, all the things that we've been asking and promoting for all these years, and hopefully that'll be, that'll be completed sometime during the 15-16 uh, academic year. And you can see some of the statistics there, you know, again, we're a small rural community, and of course, one of the things that they like to tout on the website is more than 150 majors, but of course that seemed to escape the academic planning task force. Okay, and so what attracted me to Central Washington University? Well, certainly all the faculty there were recognized for their teaching. All were engaged in the department and they were all open to change. It was a functional department, collaborative department, people were working together. And when I mean everyone is working together, everyone is involved, even our non tenure track faculty, Professor Shannon Rizell, is the, is the faculty member in charge of the advising the physics club. And I think, you know, the physics club has won 17 out of the last 20 years has won an outstanding SBS chapter. So when I say everyone is involved, everyone is committed to the department, that's the type of, that's the type of department that I'm going, that I, that I saw there. We had a dual degree physics engineering program already. What really attracted me was the fact that undergraduate research was a degree requirement there. All, all degrees were required undergraduate research. The dean was a geologist and the provost was a biologist. Hey, they could speak our language. So this was great. I mean, we, we can go ahead. There's so many things to capitalize. Um, the department was about the same as the national average, producing what was comparable to what one would expect. And the department was about, you know, five and a half or so people. Um, and so that's, that's the kind of layout that we had.